Mr. Ambassador, thank you for seeing uh, diplomatic connections, and thank you for this conversation. Good morning. Um, I want, good morning. I want to start by asking you uh, to describe the current state of bilateral relations with the United States. Let's start with, the, with that. Thank you very much. Uh, I would uh, maybe make two two main comments from the well, historical perspective. Uh, one is that uh, there is uh, the modern phase of uh, Slovak-American relations. Mm -hmm. uh, since uh, the independence of Slovakia, uh, we have uh, created uh, Slovak-American uh, bilateral relations uh, on uh, January 1st, uh, 1993. So we have been uh, marking uh, 25 years of uh, existence right. of uh, the Slovak-US uh, bilateral mm -hmm. relations since uh, January 1st, and uh, we are preparing a series of uh, celebrations, uh, kicking off with uh, a national reception. As the is the, embassy, the US Embassy in uh, Prague, I understand. Uh, uh, yes, 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 Bratislava, and uh, we, we actually have joint celebrations with the Czech Republic, uh, and that uh, actually second part of mm -hmm. our uh, celebration, a centennial, mm -hmm of uh, Czechoslovak-US uh, relations, uh, where Slovakia was a part of uh, then uh, Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so we have been marking uh, already 100 years uh, since the uh, since right. beginning of this year. So there are actually two, two celebrations. Uh, Slovakia has, has become a kind of independent entity as mm -hmm. part of uh, Czechoslovakia. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so the relations have been uh, really very intense uh, since the creation of independent Slovakia. As uh, Slovakia, you know, has become uh, uh, a country in transformation from totalitarian regime uh, to a, a, a democracy, and uh, the U.S. Had, uh, had played a very critical role in this transformation and integration period. Uh, Slovakia joined uh, European Union and NATO in 2004, so it has been uh, more than 10 years. 2004, NATO, 2007. 2007, it was European uh, Union. No. No. 2007 was European Union as well. Yeah. Yes. And so we, we joined. 2004 uh, the same. NATO. 2007 European Union. No. 2004 it? European Union. Oh, I see. Yeah. So at, at the same year, uh, 2007 uh -huh. it was uh, Romania and Bulgaria. So. Oh, okay. Uh, so we were actually in this uh, big bank uh, enlargement right. of the European Union, the first phase. So uh, ten countries uh, together, okay. and uh, Slovakia actually uh, joined NATO. Uh, in the second wave of enlargement uh, after mm -hmm. Czech Republic, Hungary, and uh, Poland joined in 1999. So Slovakia joined in 2004. So the uh, uh, U.S. has played really critical role in this transformation and integration period. Uh, uh, there are, of course, a uh, number of success stories of our cooperation, including uh, uh, robust investment uh, in Slovak economy. So uh, now the ties are very, very close, both in political uh, economic, uh, cultural, but also people-to-people -people ties. What, are the, what is the trade situation at the moment between the two countries? Uh, we are net exporter right. uh, because of our very strong industrial yes. base. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, Slovakia being uh, the largest per capita producer of cars in the world, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we, pr uh, we export a uh, huge amount of uh, cars and uh, machineries mm -hmm. in general. And uh, one of the uh, primary destinations is U.S. Mar US market. And what, what are the figures? Do you, do you happen to remember them? Or do you, in other words, what's, what is the global um, size of this, of this uh, uh, bilateral trade? Uh, for a Slovak, uh, Slovak economy, of mm -hmm. course, uh, you know, we cannot compete with of the course, size of Germany course, and France. Course, uh, yeah, needs, so we are speaking in uh, billions uh, of uh, US dollars rather than tens or uh, hundreds of billions. Right. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, for Slovakia, Slovak US uh, uh, trade uh, is, uh, is something, uh, US is an, uh, in, uh, in the top 10, but at the end of the, of the, uh, of the 10. So, so nine. But ten you've years. also developed. Uh, I mean, you, you know, tr traditionally you you have an industrial. You certainly have an industrial base. But you've also developed a high tech uh, industry. It seems to me. Yes, it's being based on uh, on this industrial base that right. uh, Slovakia yeah. has been playing a very important role uh, both in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. in the older times as a part of Czechoslovakia. So as every country tries to uh, increase uh, the quality of uh, of sure. its labor force. Uh, Slovakia has been, uh, uh, of course, trying, uh, doing its uh, best uh, mm -hmm. in this area. So uh, after this initial phase of uh, investment,
investments uh, directed to uh, to the manufacturing base. We are now discussing with uh, uh, investors in Slovakia and trying to attract investors with uh, more added value jobs. Uh, mm -hmm. That would uh, mean more innovation, more uh, uh, accelerators, uh, uh, incubators uh, for Slovak startups okay. uh, that would be actually working together with investors on uh, uh, new discoveries. Uh, so Slovakia has been very active in this field. And uh, you personally have been here before. You were here as uh, a DCM, if I remember rightly, between 2003 and 2005? Yes, that's correct. And, and do you find the difference in um, Washington, D.C. on your second visit? Um, uh, of course, uh, every country I mean, changes. There was a gap of what, seven years? Yes, so, something like seven years. Every country changes, of course, uh, due to the you know global developments right. and, uh, uh, of course, uh, domestic uh, domestic agenda. But uh, I would I would differentiate it from uh, from the content of my agenda uh, and uh, from the situation here in the United States. Uh, from the first perspective, actually, my uh, top agenda at that time when I served as DCM mm -hmm. was uh, integration of Slovakia into NATO. Okay. So that was my main mission to work with the Senate on the ratification mm -hmm. uh, that we achieved a uh, very, very good result. 100% uh, uh, of present uh, senators mm -hmm. voted in favor of uh, integrating right. Slovakia to NATO. So uh, we really fulfilled uh, our, uh, our criteria that were, that were required at mm -hmm. that time. So Slovakia has become a full-fledged uh, member. So for me, it was a mission accomplished, a very mm -hmm. su a big success story in my personal career. Uh, since I have become an ambassador, uh, there is a much broader agenda for me, of course, uh, being uh, you know as a kind of top of the of the team here at right. the embassy. Uh, but uh, also also the uh, the requirements uh, dictate uh, you know to fill in uh, our bilateral relations uh, through different dimensions. Mm -hmm. And most, uh, mostly the focus is on, uh, on trade, uh, economy, innovation. Uh, and uh, here uh, we have been trying to, you know, create a, a kind of both institution-based uh, cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have been uh, trying to, to work on creation of, uh, uh, of the business council that we, we actually mm -hmm. succeeded to do so la last year. So we have a number of companies helping us uh, promoting the trade uh, and innovation agenda here in the United States but also uh, we encourage uh, uh, Slovak companies uh, to, to, to be more active uh, more mm -hmm. active here in the US market and uh, uh, here we have uh, already several successes is that difficult well. uh, it is difficult because uh, because of the distance the uh, of course uh, the Slovak companies uh, try to uh, to compete uh, on the European market because it's much easier. I would imagine that the, the, your number one trade uh, partner is still the European Union. I would it is. Say. It is. Yes, eighty percent of our export uh, production is placed uh, on right. the European market, on the EU market. But uh, we've been trying to encourage uh, uh, the Slovak uh, small and medium-sized businesses mm -hmm. uh, to enter the US market because it's. Uh, very well integrated market, uh, very competitive, but uh, very rewarding, uh, so to say. And there's a diaspora, presumably, that you have to keep in touch with, or do you? Absolutely. I mean, are there, how, I mean how large is the, is the Slovak diaspora? So, uh, and where is it? We because count, I mean, yeah, yeah, we count that uh, Slovakia is the, uh, the country of uh, immigrants, uh, right. so all around the world we count, count so, so something like two, two million Immigrants right. uh, from Slovakia out of five million population, of so course, it's a vast yes. immigration, and uh, most of most of this immigration uh, had, had, has been directed to to, to the United, United States. States. So we used to have uh, uh, around one million uh, Slovaks uh, through the uh, last century mm -hmm. that we have counted. Uh, the numbers uh, got diminished because of the assimilation of uh, the previous generations into the mm -hmm. American society, right. but. Uh, Currently, we count something like uh, 400 to 500,000 uh, uh, Slovaks, Slovaks living in, in the United States. Uh, the current emigration uh, has been uh, much lower than uh, the historic right. emigration at the beginning of 20th century because of the you know, economic mm -hmm. hardship and so on. Uh, Slovakia offers much more opportunities than mm -hmm. it was uh, 100 years ago. So the immigration dropped, uh, but uh, still we rely very much on this uh, Slovak mm -hmm. diaspora here 
be it uh, the historical uh, emigres uh, or uh, uh, the, the modern uh, Slovak emigration that is based mainly on uh, innovation, uh, uh, the researchers, uh, uh, startups, okay, uh, right. you know, the mm -hmm. very, very uh, advanced companies that are entering the U.S. market that, uh, you know, they right. can compete here. And then hopefully the view will go back to Yes, Slovak. yes. So there is, uh, there is actually uh, more discussion about the brain circulation so that uh, we don't necessarily speak about brain gain and brain drain, mm -hmm. yes. but also brain circulation using the know-how of Slovaks living in the U.S., uh, bringing their know-how. They don't necessarily need to move uh, physically back to mm -hmm. Slovakia, but they, they, their help is enormous and very, very precious. I, when I said ch change, I was also thinking in terms of the actual, you know, if you like, uh, quality of life and, uh, and uh, the social change in the city itself. Um, but in, in the seven year span that you were not here, you know, that you would actually arrive here and say, oh, you know, that was different from what it was. That's what I was thinking yes. also of. Mm -hmm. um, yes, that's, uh, that's the second part of my uh, assessment uh, right. of being right. uh, uh, in the U.S. Uh, uh, right. uh, 10 years ago and now. And uh, U.S. has done uh, enormous, uh, you know, underwent uh, enormous changes uh, uh, due to the globalization. So, uh, mm -hmm. so you could see uh, also from the structure of economy that uh, uh, US, uh, US changed, uh, you know, the mm -hmm. added value jobs uh, have increased. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you lost a uh, number of manufacturing jobs because right. of the globalization. So that's, uh, th this, is, this is the reason yeah. for a number of challenges uh, mm -hmm. here in this society. But um, most of the developed countries have been uh, uh, facing this, uh, this dilemma. Mm -hmm you know, how to keep the manufacturing jobs uh, while, uh, you know, bringing more added yes. value jobs so that uh, people can earn more money mm -hmm. and uh, be more better off. So I think that this is, uh, uh, this is the uh, challenge that uh, U.S. economy, but also the Western European economies have been dealing with. But uh, when I, if I take, uh, you know, the situation in D.C., it has changed uh, enormously. Uh, you know, it's a booming, uh, booming capital uh, with a lot of uh, new neighborhoods, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the, the quality of life uh, improved uh, considerably. Uh, the crimi criminality rate uh, went down, so that uh, also mm -hmm. is due to the, the new jobs that have been created right. uh, around uh, in DC and uh, in DC metro area. So I think that uh, uh, I've been uh, very positively struck by the by the developments. You, you of course, uh, the Slovakia is a member of Visegrad, is, you know, one of the Visegrad Four. Um, and the remarkable, one of the remarkable stories um, of the 20th century, it seems to me, is this um, transformation of uh, the four of yourselves and the Poles and the Hungarians and the Czechs uh, from um, the satellites of the, of the Soviet Union and then following the collapse of the empire, of the Soviet empire, uh, into, uh, you know, liberal democracies. Um, in basically a very short time. I mean, helped, yes, by the United States, and helped, yes, by the, the European encouragement, um, which was considerable, uh, setting up a, a kind of a structure whereby, you know, you, your institutions progressed, if I remember rightly. Um, but it also required a certain amount of internal will. I mean, where did this, sort of, where did this determination uh, come from? I mean, from four nations, but let's stick to, Slo to, to, to Slovakia, um, for, for, you know, four nations uh, that had been uh, for 50 years under Moscow control, all of a sudden um, they knew where they were going. I mean, where, did, where did this come from? I mean, you, especially in your case, the case of Slovakia, because Slovakia actually, as far as the economy is concerned, for example, is one of the, uh, you know, is one of the uh, good news stories of uh, of the European Union. You avoided the financial crisis. Uh, you had what? You still have a 3.5% yep. uh, growth rate. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, and you're doing pretty well. So, I mean, how does uh, a, a, a people, how does a nation find the, the will to do this? Mm -hmm. uh, Visegrad uh, has its own history and uh, it proved to be a very efficient. Yes, I will talk about Visegrad in a minute. I'm yeah. basically, you mean, mo mostly I want to talk about the Slovaks at the moment and uh, how you do this. I mean. Oh, you mean uh, our 
yes, economic I mean, success your, your, story. Yeah, and, uh, your economic success story yeah. and your, su mm -hmm. your success story. Jenny. Your separation from uh, mm -hmm. the Czechs, all right, I mean, there are 10 million, you were only five. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it was the dominant uh, part of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the twinning, mm -hmm. but it had happened for a long time. So, I mean, and you, sub you find all this, I mean, the Czechs weren't very happy to see you leave, mm -hmm. right? And you celebrated. So, I mean, is, was there a new generation that found us, or did the old generation suddenly discover it's uh, a, a determination that it didn't have before? Mm -hmm. uh, as, I, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, Slovakia uh, has been uh, a success story due to several uh, several developments, right. and I would uh, I would combine uh, the three main uh, main processes uh, in the 90s and 2000s. Mm -hmm. uh, one is uh, globalization, uh, second is transformation, and third is integration. All these three combined actually brought uh, huge opportunities for Slovakia. The question was uh, how, we, how we deal and how we embrace uh, those processes. Uh, I would say that uh, transformation and integration processes have been uh, a real success story. So now we are right. actually trying to cope with uh, the globalization process. Yes, so my question is why did they, were they a success story? Uh, one of the reasons was that uh, actually we have, we, ha we, we have been lucky to have uh, really uh, uh, enlightened leaders uh, who, who understood uh, the challenges of, of, the, uh, of, of those times. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that uh, the, uh, the government of uh, Mikuláš Zurinda uh, at that time, who right. came in power in 98. Absolutely. Uh, was uh, actually un, uh, was uh, in, the, in the position to understand uh, those challenges. Mm -hmm. So we had to uh, catch up with uh, our neighbors because uh, we had we have had the period of uh, uh, of difficult uh, times uh, to embrace uh, liberal democratic mm -hmm. governance. Uh, so the period between ninety four and ninety eight has uh, has been uh, had been very challenging for Slovakia from this perspective, and that motivated uh, the public actually when they saw that. Uh, our neighbors uh, have been uh, uh, integrated uh, much much faster than uh, Slovakia was. Uh, they revolted against this type of governance, and in '98, actually, they brought uh, to power uh, the uh, reform forces. Yes. Uh, so the period of '98 uh, to 2006 have been really very strong uh, uh, reform uh, process uh, period when uh, Slovakia has introduced deep uh, economic reforms, including the flat tax. That was the very first, uh, uh, very first reform uh, uh, of this kind in Europe. As you, such. Have, you have the flat tax? Yes. Oh, yes. So this, this attracted a lot of, uh, uh, lot of investors, uh, in spite of the fact that, uh, you know, our neighbors have, had been a much more popular destination mm -hmm. for investors. So these deep economic reforms, including uh, the reform of banking sector, we privatized all of the banks, uh, so so it brought a lot of banking investments uh, into Slovakia. So uh, deep and uh, very broad uh, domestic economic reforms combined with uh, integration and transformation of Slovakia actually brought this success story. And and uh, you are actually the only one of the Visegrad countries um, that converted to the euro. Yes, as soon as we joined in 2004, uh, the political consensus in Slovakia was. Uh, uh, to deepen the integration as much as possible. So uh, in 2007, uh, Slovakia joined the Schengen zone, and mm -hmm. in 2009, uh, the Eurozone. So since then, since that time, we, we are fully integrated. Uh, on the other hand, of course, um, there is still Russia sitting on the other side of, uh, you know. Um, so at, at this point, uh, what is uh, Slovakia's relationship with, uh, with, with Russia? Uh, since uh, the break of this uh, bipolar world, uh, we have been trying, you know, to play a mm -hmm. very positive role uh, to integrate uh, new Russia into the uh, European and transatlantic uh, uh, cooperation and, of course, global cooperation. Uh, there have been ups and downs, uh, you know, both in domestic uh, developments mm -hmm. in, in Russia and in our relationship between uh, EU, NATO on one side and uh, Russia on the other side. Uh, I look from the perspective of uh, longer term, uh, longer term gains, and uh, uh, Russia has decided to, uh, you know, to be very, very aggressive uh, in, in terms mm -hmm. against its neighbors. Uh, so the 
uh, occupation of Crimea and uh, Western Ukraine uh, 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 doesn't add uh, to uh, you know to uh, to the situation of uh, improving uh, the ties. So actually, we have been backsliding in in our uh, in our cooperation. So so we have to sort out uh, this uh, uh, this type of type of relationship. Uh, Russia Which is has an to ongoing play. operation. Uh, yes, uh, Russia has to play has to play with uh, with the uh, regular uh, actual actual uh, rules. Uh, that is uh, OSC basic principles, uh, inviolability of borders, uh, respecting the sovereignty, and also the choice of uh, different countries uh, to uh, uh, to to cooperate with uh, with different uh, players in Europe, like European Union, NATO. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, so we have to uh, we have to stress uh, you know these principles because uh, that's uh, what played in our favor and uh, we think that uh, it will play in favor of, uh, of others. There are um, various ongoing situations here. One of them is um, uh, energy dependence um, on Russia. Um, the other is, to a certain extent, I I I understand. There is also, although you're in NATO, dependence on uh, um, weapons uh, supplies f from Russia to to establish continuity, to you know, to maintain. Yes. Okay. Now, both of these are still uh, are still there, I presume. Mm. So you have these um, these two situations to deal with on a uh, continuous basis. And the other thing is um, uh, EU sanctions. Uh, you support EU sanctions, I presume. Yes. Uh, but there was a time when you, uh, I think, the S Slovakia, among other nations, and not just Slovakia, advi were, were advising the EU to, you know, to, to not to be too tough on uh, the Soviets in terms of the um, uh, sanctions because of uh, fear that the Soviets would then turn around. I mean, the sorry, the Russians would then turn around and re retaliate. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, uh, from, from this perspective of uh, energy security, I would uh, like to highlight that uh, Slovakia has done um, a big uh, progress uh, in terms of uh, uh, becoming independent from uh, exclusively Russian imports of, uh, of gas. Mm -hmm. uh, in 2009, uh, in uh, this uh, famous uh, gas crisis, yes. uh, Slovakia was, was one of the most exposed yeah, country, and right. uh, actually, uh, the deliveries of gas from Russia uh, through the exclusive route uh, mm -hmm. via Ukraine got stopped for two weeks, and uh, the Slovak economy suffered, and uh, the others, of course, because yeah, we are a very important yeah. uh, right. transit you, country. You the pipeline. Uh, yes, the one of the main pipelines. One of the main uh, pipelines to yes. for, for Russian uh, yes. oil into into Western Europe. Yes, oil and gas. Uh, since 2009, Slovakia has done a number of steps to diversify uh, the routes of, mm -hmm. uh, of deliveries, uh, be, it, be it Russian gas, but other, other types of gas. So now we can, uh, uh, we can provide uh, gas for our economy uh, from different other uh, routes. Uh, so we have, uh, we have got connected uh, to the southern uh, pipelines okay. via Hungary, mm -hmm. uh, through the western networks uh, mm -hmm. via uh, Austria. And now we are been building interconnector with Poland uh, to get connected uh, to Polish LNG terminal. Mm -hmm. So we, we are actually totally diversified when it comes to the routes. Mm -hmm. uh, now there is a lot of discussion about the deliveries of LNG gas uh, from the United States. That could be a game changer in terms of the, uh, ah, diversification really? yes. of sources. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, LNG terminal uh, in Poland has been functioning. LNG terminal in uh, Croatia is being discussed uh, to mm -hmm. be built. So there will be actually much more security when it comes to mm -hmm. energy uh, distribution. When it comes to military, uh, we, <laughs> we have been doing some, uh, some progress already uh, in terms of modernization and phasing out uh, the old Soviet uh, military equipment. Uh, in uh, recent years, uh, we have signed uh, the agreement with the United States uh, to buy uh, Black Hawks uh, helicopters uh, to phase out the old MI6 uh, helicopters. Mm -hmm. And now there is a lot of discussion about the land uh, and air forces uh, to, to continue. Slovakia has already reached 20% uh, of its uh, military expenditures in terms of modernization ah. expenditure. So, so we have been uh, quite successful in this area. Uh, you asked about the uh, 
the third question was. Uh, well, uh, well I mean, but that mainly that was it. The third was the, uh, the, was the sanction, actual sanctions. Sanctions, sanctions yes. yes uh, I uh, mean, the, the, the Slovak position, as I understand it, has changed somewhat in terms of the sanctions yeah. from from uh, from the first, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first sanctions in two thousand and nine. No. Uh, sanctions have been introduced since uh, the aggression of uh, right. Russia into, right. okay. uh, into Ukraine. Okay. So uh, since that time, uh, the first phase, uh, as you could uh, observe in uh, different countries, mm -hmm. uh, there was an internal discussion about how not to harm uh, right. uh, domestic businesses right. uh, in, uh, uh, in, uh, in trade with Russia. So, uh, so there was a kind of heated discussion both uh, on domestic political level uh, and on the EU and uh, NATO level. Uh, we have had uh, some concerns about, uh, you know, uh, modeling the sanctions uh, to the very best uh, mm -hmm. type that uh, it's, it actually directs uh, it as a pressure on, on right. Russia to comply with some principles and not as a, as a punishment for, for our businesses and, uh, uh, and the others. Uh, in, in the end, uh, the uh, compliance with uh, principles prevailed over these uh, domestic uh, uh, economic Absolutely. interests and uh, Slovakia has been uh, uh, sub supporting uh, supporting sanctions uh, since they have been uh, uh, since they have been uh, introduced uh, we we try to uh, appeal to uh, to review sanctions mm -hmm. to discuss right. uh, you know the mm -hmm. uh, the efficiency mm -hmm. of sh sanctions uh, every every period uh, so that mm -hmm. uh, we see that uh, the sanctions are efficient enough to uh, to push Russia to comply with uh, with the principles, but uh, 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 our position is that uh, uh, sanctions should stay in place uh, till right. till uh, we actually we announce that uh, the sanctions or the the, the principles has been complied. With. What uh, what would you <coughs> expect the Russians to do vis-à-vis -vis Ukraine, which is your neighbor after all? It's very difficult to say because uh, we are now facing the situation of uh, conflict conflict uh, in Western Ukraine and uh, right. occupation uh, in Crimea. Mm -hmm. So uh, the sanction mechanism is aimed at, uh, uh, you know, uh, persuading uh, Rus Russia uh, to sit at the table and discuss uh, the model of uh, uh, cooperation both with Ukraine and uh, European community. Uh, it's very difficult to say because uh, mm, so far, uh, we have been uh, seeing only very, very small steps uh, uh, towards the uh, uh, towards the resolution of the conflict. So, so it's a very long way to go to, mm -hmm. to solve the conflict. But uh, you, you, what are your relations? What is uh, Slovakia? What are Slovakia's relations with with the Ukraine generally? Ukraine is our neighbor, and uh, right. we understand that uh, uh, the better relations uh, we have. Uh, the, it helps Ukraine to integrate closely uh, with uh, the European and transatlantic structures. So we try to help Ukraine both in integration, but also in our bilateral uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, we we are actually trying to share our success story uh, from our transformation process. So both uh, former Prime Minister Durinda and former Minister of Finance Miklos. Uh, has mm -hmm. been advising for several years uh, to the current, current government, both President uh, Poroshenko and uh, Prime Minister Horisman. So we have our uh, advisors uh, there right. to help Ukraine. But uh, in your view, Ukraine hasn't reached the stage uh, in the reform of institutions that it can actually join the EU, okay, do you? Uh, currently, we don't speak about uh, the date of accession for Ukraine, so it's a gradual process. Uh, it will take uh, longer time than it was uh, the case of uh, Central Europeans, uh, mm -hmm. when uh, there were a number of uh, uh, moments uh, that uh, played into sure. speed uh, integration, mm -hmm. fast integration. Uh, this will take much longer time, but uh, uh, the most important thing is uh, the political commitment of Ukraine to be integrated into Western uh, and transatlantic uh, structures. NATO and the NATO European and Union. Union yeah. Yes. If um, there were a European Union referendum in uh, Slovakia tomorrow, um, 
with the uh, pro-EU uh, side win? Uh, I'm confident that uh, there will be a yes vote. Uh, 70 plus percent of uh, Slovak population uh, fully supports uh, our membership in the European Union. Uh, it's being challenged by different factors, uh, being the radical mm -hmm. forces or, or anti-propaganda uh, from different uh, mm -hmm. parts uh, of the of the world, mostly right. emanating from the east. Right. But uh, uh, so far, uh, Slovak membership in the EU has been a success story, so population fully supports it. I see. So you don't have this. Uh, in other words, there will be no um, uh, Slovak Brexit. No Slexit. No Slexit. So far okay. in the <laughs> right. All right. Yes. But um, as far as the Visegrad um, uh, is concerned, it seems to me that there are various degrees of um, uh, there are various attitudes towards. Uh, um, the way one deals with uh, uh, Brussels and, and the, the European Union um, central uh, structure. Um, and these vary from the Hungarians on one side with the Poles having their arguments over the, the judicial reform uh, to um, then Slovakia on the other side, which is already a member of the uh, Eurozone. Um, other than that, and the fact that there are refugees, th there's a refugee issue well, I think you all share the same view, more or less, um, but we'll get to that in a minute. I mean, this guy doesn't really count for much, does it? Uh, it depends uh, how how you weigh weigh the influence. Uh, for us, uh, uh, Visegrad uh, is a kind of coordination mechanism right. uh, of four countries uh, on different topics. Uh, it used to be much more important political tool when uh, we were in when the, the US. yeah when we were trying when to get in into when you were in transition yes basically. yes so for for transition period it played really very critical role right. uh, it has been a period of uh, soul searching for Visegrad uh, as soon as we joined EU right. and NATO but uh, on specific topics uh, in the EU and uh, sometimes NATO agenda. Uh, we try to seek uh, joint positions, and uh, it has played well. Uh, so we have coordination meetings because b before each uh, European Council, for each uh, Foreign Affairs Council, very often. So we try to coordinate our positions. So very often they uh, they are they are very similar, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say that uh, uh, for us it has uh, gained a, w a weight, uh, you know, in. Uh, promoting our interests uh, in uh, multilateral fora mm -hmm. and in European structures. So uh, so we, we decided to keep the Visegrad uh, actually working and uh, uh, consider it as a very important regional instrument. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, on refugees, however, you, uh, I think all four countries uh, reject um, the quota um, proposals of the European Union. Am I correct in saying that? Uh, quota as a mechanism has been very controversial and uh, all four Visegrad countries uh, have raised uh, their concerns. Right. Uh, some of them uh, uh, decided uh, to challenge it uh, with the European Court. Uh, Slovakia, uh, since it's a more radical position at the very beginning, uh, uh, totally mm -hmm. rejecting quota, uh, has come into some kind of understanding uh, of uh, uh, of discussing this uh, very complicated issue with uh, with, with Brussels, uh, with European structures on on a combination of uh, providing the, the financial assistance, uh, accepting certain number of right. uh, of immigrants, and uh, uh, and working on uh, protection of external borders. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we see it as a as a package solution. Uh, so we have uh, we have moved our position. And, and uh, in terms of numbers, we are talking about. Uh, in terms of numbers, uh, as uh, you know, no no member state is uh, is meeting uh, uh, those re uh, required numbers. Uh, you know, from distribution. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's very difficult, you know, to to judge where we stand. But uh, we have started receiving some uh, some immigrants. Uh, 
both from, uh, uh, from Syria, but uh, also we try to count uh, the immigrants that come from Eastern, uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, so there is, uh, there is a continuous dialogue on, uh, you know, when you say, uh, uh, excuse me, immigrants from Eastern Europe, you're talking about Romania and Bulgaria, presumably. No, it's uh, Ukraine and uh, oh, Ukraine, further okay, east. Yes, yes. Further outside east. of the Yeah, outside of the EU, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and this will, this, I mean, in, in other words, you, you, you are now accepting Syrians and you are now, some, a certain number of Syrians anyway, and, uh, and, um, Compa adding to those East Europeans from uh, from you know countries outside the EU is that the situation? Yes, actually we are now discussing uh, uh, with uh, the European Union uh, the, the the model how to you know how to meet uh, certain numbers because uh, uh, each country has its own immigration uh, rules and requirements right. and mm -hmm. uh, very often uh, those immigrants who come are without. Uh, uh, without the document, so so we have th there is a vetting process uh, of course, on yes. those on those persons. So there is an ongoing process. So I can't tell you exact numbers. Uh, you know how uh, how how many uh, immigrants uh, we, we we received out of uh, certain uh, numbers that we committed to receive, but uh, yeah, it's an ongoing process. But that is a different uh, situation. That's a change in your in your uh, original um, position as far as refugees are concerned as I understand it. And also it's, it's quite different from that of even of the Czechs, uh, actually, uh, to say nothing of the Hungarians, of course. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a complete change because we have been still challenging uh, this quota distribution. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, our uh, immigration policy uh, hasn't changed from the perspective of uh, uh, helping when it comes to hum humanitarian assistance, uh, uh, helping the asylum seekers. but. Uh, Maybe we have uh, more strict uh, rules uh, in our mm -hmm. uh, in our country than maybe some mm -hmm. some Western European countries. So the process has been uh, much longer and uh, more complicated. What direction would you like to see the European Union? Uh, I mean, given that you you want to stay in the European Union, and there is no uh, you know there is no talk of leaving or anything like that. What what for you? What would be the post the ideal post-Brexit development in the European Union? Uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to see, uh, to engine Europe or to speed Europe uh, because uh, right. it, can, mm -hmm. it can discourage a number of right. countries mm -hmm. uh, uh, from, uh, from being integrated deeper, mm -hmm. joining the Eurozone or Schengen mm -hmm. area. So, so we need to be very sensitive about uh, uh, different speeds of Europe, uh, uh, because there are a number of disintegration processes. Uh, we want to deepen the integration in order to make the EU more competitive on the global uh, global arena. But uh, that's a very very sensitive process. Uh, uh, everyone has been waiting for uh, you know these German French uh, yeah, yes, suggestions. Yes, yes. Uh, so mm -hmm. so we need uh, uh, the German government to be in place uh, right. so that uh, mm -hmm. we can see uh, their. Uh, their suggestions on the paper so that uh, they can be discussed among uh, 28. And then we'll see. Of course, Slovakia would like uh, to, to remain in the core uh, group mm -hmm. of integration right. as we did this political decision to join Euro as the deepest, uh, deepest right. form of uh, integration. And uh, we will be a part of this uh, discussion be it within the Eurozone mm -hmm. or uh, EU28. And uh, our aim is uh, to make uh, really EU competitive and much more efficient uh, on the uh, uh, on the external affairs. Uh, so playing a very important role in uh, decision making uh, in, in the world, but also uh, to to make uh, the domestic uh, processes much more efficient. Uh, so we have to find uh, the proper balance between the national uh, competencies and uh, the EU competencies. What about the whole idea of, a, of a, an, an EU budget and an EU, you know, uh, uh, in other words, a, a common budget for all 28 and uh, um, more central control of the economies of the 28? Mm. It's an ongoing discussion because uh, currently we have an EU budget uh, in the size of 1% of right. GDP, though the EU institutions don't collect taxes. So right. that's uh, one, yes. one very important part of the discussion, whether the EU could mm -hmm. be uh, collecting taxes uh, in the, in the mm -hmm. coming future. 
but uh, of course, you know, if uh, the EU wants to have teeth, it needs to have money. So, so right. we need uh, we need to discuss these uh, fiscal and budgetary issues as part of the the bigger picture. And speaking <coughs> of teeth, what about the defense dimension of the EU? Uh, there is a there is a very positive prospect in uh, moving this uh, uh, this agenda forward uh, through creation of the PESCO concept. So the Europeans have been discussing how to uh, enhance uh, the military capabilities uh, within the EU as part of the uh, transatlantic uh, uh, military uh, military capabilities. But uh, in the coming future, we'll see more. EU independence in decision making and maybe in uh, operation operational types of uh, EU engagement. EU independence yes. from the transatlantic uh, yes. link. Yes. And is this something they want or something they feel is inevitable? I think that uh, uh, this uh, overwhelming uh, overwhelming dominance in terms of uh, fiscal. Uh, uh, fiscal contribution by the United States uh, need mm -hmm. to be need to be balanced, and uh, as soon as we put more uh, financial resources, uh, there will be increasing demand on uh, more independent decision making. So it comes uh, hand in hand. Uh, uh, Europe contributing more uh, uh, into uh, defense uh, capabilities, uh, but also being more independent in, mm -hmm. in decision making. Thank you very much. Ambassador. Thank you very much.